I actually had a couple of behavioral questions mm -hmm. that I wanted to run by you, if that's okay. Sure. Um, okay, so, um, so I've been working on walk trot um, and actually Sunday morning, um, I, I was doing walk trot transitions and really focusing during the trot on long and low. And right towards the end, he got into this beautiful, so he's holding the correct posture for longer, which is good. But then he just, he kind of like, he not only held the posture, but he, he just, all of a sudden, he just, he felt like really balanced um, and like really good rhythm, good energy, and just using his whole body and balance. And I was, and his head was like long and low. And I was just like, wow. And so we, we were, we were out in the, the hay field. Um, and I guess we'd, we'd come up, I don't know, at least the length of an arena um, where he sort of, he held that all the way up. But mm -hmm. then he, he did this lovely downward transition and where he did the down, I didn't ask for it. He did it. And where he did it, he was exactly parallel with the gate on the other side of the, well, it was, we were, we were in the middle of the field and on the side of the field where the gate where we would go to go home. Oh, yeah. um, and it was pretty clear way of saying, okay, I've been a really good boy. I've done this. And we're, it's like, you know, we'd already been out for about an hour. Um, let's go home now. <laughs> yeah. um, and, but I was so happy with the, that beautifully balanced trot and that transition down everything. Like he held everything together and he just like smoothly transitioned down. I was so happy with it that I just went with it, even though he, I didn't ask for it. He just did it. Yep. Is that like, I think part of the problem that I've had is like, he doesn't trust me as a leader. Um, is that okay? Did I do the right thing there or should I have? Um, I, I believe not um, accepted that, that listening to their suggestions is a fair thing to do. Okay. Good. And then at that point, even if he wanted to go that way, and I agreed we're going to go that way, I'm going to try and make it clear that I've decided to go that way. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Maybe he wants to turn left. Maybe we'll do a turn on the haunches right and head over. Just yeah. some little thing to say, okay, yeah, I heard you. And, and, and there'll be times when um, that wasn't quite as good before that. And he says, can we go to the gate? And you don't want to create the habit of always yes. <laughs> and But I, I'm also very clear on, yes, I heard you. Like I literally say, <laughs> yes, I heard you. This is what we need to get done first. You know, we're going to work on this. Then we're going to do that. Some people probably think I'm a complete goof doing that. But there's there's a story. Um, it's a true story. <laughs> it's my horse. My my boomer horse that I still I still have. Um, I use, I kept him as a stallion until he was four. I bred two seasons. I bred two year old, three year old. I must have gelded him in the fall. It was three year old year because then I had his brother for a stud. And he got put out to pasture with the herd uh, and his brother, and um, which was not on the property that we were on. I had this other big pasture. It was turned out there. And I would go there, and he would just be looking at me like, what did I do wrong? Because he was like my number one horse. He was the one I was always working with. We were bonded. Everything was, what did I do wrong? And I'm like, buddy, like you're with your brother and your mother and your friends. Like, go have fun. <laughs> and I brought him in the spring to start working him again. And it wasn't the same. And I literally... Oh, I had read a, it was a post on Facebook, but it was from Horse and Rider magazine. And the question was, if you could tell your horse one thing, what would you tell them? And I thought I would tell Boomer that I was sorry, that I thought I was doing the right thing, putting him out with the herd to be part of the herd, that I didn't mean to make him feel abandoned, and that I have no no intention of abandoning it. Like, like I, I was buying and selling horses right, left, and center. He was not for sale. And, and that, you know, basically, if I could do with him what I need to do, which was 
ride him to get my own coaching certification plus use him for students, <laughs> then it would be in my best interest to never sell him. Like he doesn't have to worry about this. But basically I would tell him that I'm sorry. I thought I was doing the right thing. And there was a change. <laughs> so I firmly believe that horses get it. And we need to take the time to explain things to them just like we would explain it to another person. They might choose to ignore it, but, <laughs> but at least we've tried. <laughs> so I'm in the same camp with you. Like I tell my horses that if we're just going, you know, like if I have one horse in the trailer, I let everybody know this horse is coming back. We'll be back you know, in a short amount of time or later this afternoon, things like that. And that has helped. And I've also told them when a horse is being sold, it's not coming back. And it has really helped the herd dynamics to have those words spoken. It's so interesting. Yeah, Boomer used to always, I had a stock truck. So Boomer would be screaming the whole time we were hollering, you know, hauling, because, you know, we left his herd. And I literally sat in the front. I was going trail riding with Lori Belanger and her Canadian horses. I sat in the front of the truck and I, put myself in his head looking out the side of the truck and I showed him going down to the trailhead going trail riding getting back in the truck coming back home unloading through his eyes cool. never ever hollered again in the truck after that trip like he never hollered on that one and never after that hmm. I don't know but <laughs> the work <laughs> That's so cool. But yeah, he earned that. He suggested it. He didn't blatantly try and drag you over there. So that was a good choice to say, yeah, you know, you're right. It felt right. Yeah. 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 It's not yeah. what most trainers are going to tell you. <laughs> <laughs> well, then this morning, all I wanted to do was try and find that nice really nice trot that we had on sunday i wanted to try and find that again so but he didn't he didn't have much energy this morning he but he is he is um um head low during trot for longer durations like like so he he is doing it i think a lot more mm -hmm. than he used to so that's pretty good awesome. he didn't he didn't want to go out today it was really interesting he um that was the other behavioral issue he um or question i wanted to ask when i um was tacking him up and i always like i take the saddle pad and i let him sniff it before i put it on it's kind of sort of like my way of saying like you know this is what we're going to do next are you okay kind of thing um and really really clear no he did not he just he moved right away um you know turned turned his whole body away he, didn't want anything to do with it so I just I put it down in front of him and I backed off myself got right out of his space um and then I did body work on him for like 10 minutes or so um just to kind of do something different and I guess about halfway through all of this not all of a sudden but at one point he lowered his head and he sniffed the saddle pad um and I wondered like was that his way of saying yeah, it's okay. We can do this now. Um, but I just kept right on with the exercise, the massage bit that I was doing. Mm -hmm. And then when I finished, then I picked up the saddle pad. And then, yeah, he let me put it on. And then I we tacked up and we rode. Um, but I, like, did I miss? Like, I saw it, but I didn't acknowledge it. Like, I saw him do that. And I should have, I should have acknowledged it right then and there. And I didn't. I just carried on with what I was doing. So. I don't know. Yeah, it's 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 a hard call, right? Because you did eventually get to it. Um, definitely, now that you're aware of it, it, it's something that that I would say, yeah, just you know, let me finish what I'm doing, and then we'll see how you feel or something. Yeah. Only because it's not going to hurt anything to acknowledge it. And if you acknowledge it, and there is a connection there, and he is getting what you're saying, then you're going to be showing him that you're listening and you'll get more communication. That's why I was worried. I was, I, I should have acknowledged it. <laughs> yeah. Cause yeah, he's, he's pretty clear. 
um, in what he's trying to tell me. He's, uh, I'm thinking, man, like how much have I missed? Yeah, my two, we, we fenced a, a back section and when they're out there, they eat, but they don't like going out there. And they'll go to the other gate. It's like, but there's no grass down there. Yeah, but you want us to go out. Yeah, but there's no grass. You got to go to the other one. It's like, we really don't like going out there. <laughs> and yet, and today, because we were going to town, I have to, I lead them through a little pasture. Then I take them out to this one that they don't want to be in. And today I, I went over there and I called them. Now, granted, I did not have the halters in my hand, but I called them and I said, we're just going in here today. The one that this has been the odd little piece of alfalfa. They're about, I don't know, 14 inches high now. You get to finally eat the alfalfa. And Boomer's like, I'm coming over. <laughs> and, you know, if they didn't have some sort of understanding, then they would have just, because every day I have to go to the other gate, halter them there and lead them to take them out there. They don't come over there when I call them because they don't want to go out to that one. Mm -hmm. And today... They're like, well, she's not putting us in that one, so we'll come. <laughs> like, okay. And, and and yeah, I always, you know, on a situation like that, I, and the same if I wanted them to do something riding-wise, and they're like, yeah, I don't want to do that. If it's something that I need to do, or I want to practice, or I don't have, you know, then I just say, yes, I hear you, mm -hmm. right? We need to do this anyway, same as you would with a kid. But I heard you. Um, yeah. Then we go do it. <laughs> well, I still kind of because she's we haven't ridden in in three days. And that's probably the longest stretch we've had in a while. And she was disappointed. I think she was disappointed today that she wasn't coming out. Yeah. She 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 she, she made some noises at me. Uh, cause I was out doing other things in the yard and I just, yeah, I'm sorry. We're not going out today. I'm sorry. So, um, yeah, she seemed a bit bummed about that. <laughs> She's kind of had a lower head today and just kind of, yeah. So that I thought that was interesting because, um, she, she's always pretty eager to come out, um, which is, I think, is a good sign. Mm -hmm. It definitely sounds like she's enjoying spending time with you. I think so. I think we're having. I think we're having. I think she's enjoying it. I don't think. Um, I, I think I'm pretty respectful of how she's feeling and stuff. But anyways, it was just kind of a, an observation today that she seemed like she was kind of bummed out that she wasn't coming out. Yeah. Yeah. I just. I love how, and a lot of people totally miss, I know you guys wouldn't miss it, a lot of people do. It's like, they'll just stare at you. I'm mm -hmm. sending you a message. Are you yeah. like, I know, you want a drink, or whatever. <laughs> yeah, following me around, whichever, whichever end I was at, she's like, look at me, I'm here. <laughs> I'm ready. So nice. <laughs> yeah. Oh, well, we're lucky to have them. 